Once upon a time on a small island off the Pacific Ocean, there lived two friends, Casper and Falky. Both stayed together and made a living out of fishing. The world had never seen such truer friends. Hey, Casper, the sun is almost up. Wake up. Ooh. Why does the night pass so soon? It should be at least four hours longer. I have been up for the past four hours, my friend, and I have already got our catch for the day. Now, I'm heading to the market. We should get a really good price for the nice fat trout. Does it matter if you get a few coins less? Not a damn less will I take. You see, someday I'm going to hit upon a huge treasure. Not the treasure again. Hold on. Yesterday I pulled up a whole new batch of crisp, juicy lettuce and carrot. You love a salad of those, so I am packing some for your lunch with my special corn stew, and we'll leave together. I need to get some more nails and tiles to repair that leaky roof. There isn't a better gardener, cook, or handyman than you on the whole island. But whatever you want to do, do it fast. I want to get there before any of the other fishermen. Nothing sells like fine, fresh fish early in the morning. People pay much higher for that. So, in this way, the friends lead a peaceful and prosperous life. Falky, the shrewd, sharp go-getter, would handle the fishing and trading, making a healthy sum of money for the both of them. And Casper, the more laid-back and lazy of the two, was just happy to cook and look after the house, garden, and cattle. One would think they had a peaceful and contented life. Having the desire of wanting a better life and working hard for it is a great purpose for life. But there are no shortcuts to success. Greed knows no peace or contentment and can often lead to dangerous roots. Here, that is a lot. Now we have more than enough money to buy that new cart and the horse. Nice. What happened to you? How can you be happy with just a cart and a horse? So, what else do you want? It will become so much easier to haul the load to the market with a new cart and a strong horse. Our boat is sturdy and big. What else do we fisher folk need? How about a big carriage and a bigger mansion? How about traveling the world without a care and having gold enough to keep and forget? How about a room full of treasures? Not that again, Falky. What do we need treasures for? We have enough money to buy whatever we need. We live on this beautiful island, and people pine for the friendship and brotherhood you and I share. Why is this not enough? This is not enough. I deserve more, Casper. And I will never get that out of fishing alone. <sighs> so, what else can you do on this island? Find some long-lost treasure? That's it. That is exactly what is going to happen. How else will we become rich on this island? You said it, my friend. We will have a stroke of luck, a huge miracle that will give us treasures. Treasures so magnificent that we never even dreamed of. Casper, I can feel it. A huge stroke of magic is finally about to happen in our lives. With every passing day, Falky became more and more obsessed with finding that stroke of luck, that miracle to find the treasure. His heart was no longer in fishing, which was the trade that he was exceptionally good at. Rather, he spent time exploring cave after cave on the tiny island, but he found nothing. 
he got even more obsessed to find the treasure. Ow. Where? Where could it be? Hey, you're back. Where have you been all day? Well, where could that treasure be? I have explored every cave on the island. Could it be hidden in the depths of land? In the sky? Underwater? Underwater? That's it. I have been looking in the wrong places. What are you talking about, Falky? I have been looking in the wrong places. Who will hide a treasure in caves? Our treasure is underwater. Maybe in a ship. Wrecked and sunk under the sea centuries ago. And all the gold, all the treasure is still there, somewhere under the sea. I am sure of it. Not the treasure again, Falky. The sea is a vast, vast expanse of hundreds of kilometers. Where will you find a ship, Falky? Give up the thought. We have more than enough money to lead a comfortable life. We have our friendship. We don't need anything else. I am not giving up. Not when I know where the treasure is. I will find it, Falky. I will. Falky, wait. Now Falky began looking for the treasure day and night, not returning home for days together, sleeping in his boat, casting his net, not for fish, but for gold. Since Falky had stopped fishing and trading, and Casper could hardly manage fishing and trading, their money began to run out. Casper had to sell their horses and cows to get money. Then Casper started doing odd jobs like selling the vegetables he grew, doing repair jobs for people on the island, and somehow kept their house running. But Falky saw and appreciated none of it, for all his eyes looked for these days was gold. One day when he was at sea, Falky saw a strange little boat approach him. A tiny strange man was on it. The boat had no rudder, no sails. Falky wondered how the boat was sailing so far out at sea. The boat came close and the man spoke. Oh, you are looking for a treasure? There was a ship, a huge one, that sailed these very waters hundreds of years ago. The ship was full of treasure far greater than man has ever seen before or since. But a storm sunk it in the sea into an eternal silence and darkness. <laughs> that treasure is mine. Show me where the ship is. Not so fast, Falky. A storm took the ship away, and a storm will bring it back for you, just for one day. You will bring one companion outside the Cavern of Steel. There, you shall spend one night in the storm lying on the ground. You will not move. You will not complain. You will brave the storm, and then maybe the treasure will be revealed to you. When do I do this? There will be a huge storm tomorrow night. Be there as soon as the sun sets. Falky rushed back home to make preparations for the next night. He excitedly told everything to Casper. But of course, Casper was not happy. Falky, the only money and riches that ever lead to any good are those that we earn with the sweat of our own brow. Any treasure that requires a storm to reveal itself, any treasure that rightfully belonged to someone else can never bring good to us. Shun this madness, Falky. Come back. You are still the best fisherman and the shrewdest trader on the island. You are asking me to give up now when our lifelong dream is about to come true. When we are so close to finding our treasure. No way. Are you coming with me or not? Or else I shall go alone. Ah, <sighs> Of course I will come. I will never leave you alone, but give up this useless, dangerous, and evil quest. Listen to me just this once. 
Well, then let us get some stout ropes and, oh yes, where is the cart? We will need to haul out all of our treasure. Uh, it is not our treasure, Falky. Falky and Casper set out and reached the rock outside the cavern. A terrible storm raged that night, and Falky, determined to find the treasure, lay soaking in the rain and lightning. Casper kept entreating him to give up the madness, but Falky didn't listen at all. By daybreak, Falky was shivering with the cold. The storm abated, and Falky saw a huge procession of strange people walking as though in a cloud of mist. When they reached Falky, Falky was scared, but still brave enough to ask, Who are you? And where is the treasure? I am the captain of the sunken ship, and these are my passengers and crew. We were on the ship when the ship sunk under the sea in the cavern. You have this one day to get the treasures. And the procession disappeared as suddenly as it had appeared. Casper, who had been near his friend the whole time, saw nothing. So we still don't know whether this was real or Falky's imagination. But Falky got up and ran towards the cavern. We have only one day to get the treasure out. It is under the water in the cavern. But the cavern is too deep and dangerous. Stop, Falky. I am going down. You hold the rope tight. Falky trekked the long rock face and reached the water below. He dived inside, and after some time, with great effort, he hauled out an entire trunk. When he opened it, he saw it was full of gold. <gasps> Gasper, I found it! I found it! Now come back! You found it! <gasps> no way! There must be so much more. Think of all the treasures that lay beneath the surface. We have an entire day, Casper, to get it out. I'm diving in again. Falky, do not put your life in danger for a shortcut to success, my brother. We will work hard and together make your dreams come true. And that was the last that was heard of Falky. Casper climbed down the cavern to look for his friend for three continuous days, but Falky could not be found. Casper was so heartbroken to lose his greatest treasure, his friend, that he did not even think of the casket of gold which Falky had claimed to have found. But Casper's struggles of the days gone by had taught him to rely on himself. He was no longer the lazy man he had once been. His farming and trade of repairing homes and furniture earned him a good living. A few years later, Casper got married and lived happily with his family. But his heart ached for his best friend, Falky. Not only because he was lost, but because Falky had given up the magnificent treasures of friendship and trade that they had only for his greed. What I have learned from my life is, be happy with who you are and make the best of it. Value what you have now. Love, family, friendships are the real treasures of life. Of course, you can have dreams for a happier, wealthier life, but fulfill them only with the magic of your talents and hard work. The world is abundant enough to fulfill everyone's dreams, but not big enough for a single person's greed. <laughs>